Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 28th of June 2011. The background image here is of noctilucent clouds. These are phenomena that you can see during the summer months anywhere above latitude 50 degrees north, which is about the latitude of London. And the, so the question for today is at what altitude do noctilucent clouds form? The answer will be given at the end. Well, if we were excited by one small bee flare yesterday, well, we should be doubly excited today because we've had two more small bee flares. But that still represents a very low level of solar activity. However, even when the sun is at a low level of activity, it still can be doing interesting things. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what has been going on. Region 1241 has decayed to just three tiny spots. Region 1240 is still there. There's definitely a region coming over the northeast limb like I talked about yesterday, but it still hasn't been numbered. But the most interesting thing that's been happening is that a new region has emerged near disk center in the northern hemisphere. So let's take a look at the SDO data from the HMI instrument and see the evolution of these regions, particularly the new one forming near disk center. In fact, I've blown up that section of the movie and you can see the spots that begin to emerge just to the left of the center of the image. But from that point on, the number and the size of spots continues to grow quite rapidly. This is a promising sign for future activity if it continues. Similarly, we can look at the magnetic movie and see the emergence of the region. Again, I've blown up the relevant section of the image so you can see the emergence more clearly. You need to watch this particular area here, but the interesting thing about that is that looking at this image from the very beginning, it would be very hard to tell where one would expect any spots to come up. Thus, forecasting the emergence of sunspot regions is very, very difficult. Now let's take a look at the transition region and see if there have been any major eruptions. There is a very large filament that lifts off from the southern polar regions, but it's very faint. So again, I've blown up the section so you may see it more clearly, but even then you're going to have to look very carefully to see it go. It's starting now. Well, did you see it? If not, run the movie through several times. In the X-ray movie, the new region doesn't look at all impressive compared with the existing ones. But again, if this continues to grow, that will change. Unfortunately, the Soho Chronograph data is running a few hours behind the SDO data. So we don't as yet see the coronal mass ejection that should be associated with that filament liftoff from the southern polar region. However, I expect it to be faint and it's at such a high latitude that it probably will not affect the Earth. The ACE data show us that the temperature, speed and density of the solar wind has dropped significantly over the last few hours. And so we are definitely in a low speed solar wind stream. The NOAA 15 data show us that the auroral zones in both the northern and southern hemisphere are not very active at the moment and the KP index is varying between 1 and 2. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 30, the X-ray background remains at B2, radio sun intensity is at 89 solar flux units, solar wind speed is under 400 kilometers per second with a density of only 0.4 protons per cubic centimeter and the KP index is rated as quiet. The forecast for the next 24 hours is that sea flares are still possible, but M and X flares are highly unlikely. Sunspot number is low, may increase a little bit with the new regions if they continue to grow. Coronal mass ejections remain likely, but the chances of a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours are remote. We can see from the composite coronal image that we have one region coming over the southeast limb in the next 24 hours, but then after that there's four or five days without any major region coming over the limb. So again, we're going to rely on the growth in the existing regions for any activity that we might get. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun today, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the sun today, go to my channel, they're all listed there. To see what the sun was doing exactly one, two or three rotations ago, go to my sun today videos on the 1st of June, 5th of May and 8th of April respectively. Today's featured global warming video discusses criticism of Al Gore's film The Inconvenient Truth. The answer to the question I posed earlier about noctilucent clouds, they form at a height of about 80 kilometers or about 50 miles. It's particularly interesting that there's no recorded sightings of them before the late 19th century. Since then their frequency, extent and intensity seems to have increased. They are thought to be indicators of change in the upper atmosphere due to global warming. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.